I mean, speaking of sensitivity, that's something that you don't come across every day when you're managing the um, the career of a guinea pig. I know it's difficult, but and I hate to backpedal. But there's this young up-and-coming actor, this sensitive guy that I came across while I was, you know, managing the career of uh, Peckerhead. And uh, he was just probably the perfect, the perfect guy for for this boy band that I was also. I mean, I had a lot of side projects at the time because I mean, if you're managing film, you might as well manage a boy band. It's the same thing. You're just coming up with ideas for music videos, and it's the same thing as coming up with ideas for movies. So, I'm managing this boy band, and they're called Menudo98. Uh, what? I didn't even touch the thing. God. But, no, like I said, there's a sensitive guy that I ran across, and his, his name was, um, Derek Freeler, and, uh, he, he comes into my office one day while I'm just, you know, I'm I'm bummed. I just lost my soul to a Japanese demon. I'm sitting in my office and I don't know what to do. And I'm stuck in L.A. trying to have conference calls with my guinea pig in, in Hollywood and his talent agent. And it's just a pain in the ass. But, no, Derek Freeler comes into my office one day. And he says, are you, uh, are you, are you calling? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm me, you know. I, I'm fed up with this conversation already. It's only one sentence in. I'm upset with this conversation. And I'm like, that's what the sign says on the door, you schmuck. Do you not know how to fucking read? And he's he gets all sad. He gets like a real legitimate tear in his eye. I'm like, whoa. I upset this kid. He's like the purest of the pure. You know? When you see somebody like that, just tear up. It's beautiful. Because some people have never heard the word fuck in their entire life. And... And when they see a, uh, you know, producer in L.A. say it, God damn lightning bugs! When they see somebody in, in L.A. say it, they don't know what to say. But, so here he is, tearing up in my office. And, uh, I'm like, son, what, what can I do for you? I'm like, I, I'm sorry, I feel bad, you know, I, I, I've been trying to watch my potty mouth around my kids. But, uh, you know, I can't help it when I'm here at the office because I got I got a crazy secretary and all of this. I'm sorry, Sporch. What what's up? And and he says, I came to you because I heard that you did music. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I used to. Back when I lived in bumfuck nowhere, I used to be a musician. He was like, will you produce my boy band, Menudo '98? And I'm like, this is the best offer I've ever had since my soul was taken by a Japanese dragon demon who massaged my inner thighs once and I'm like yeah 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 let's do it but here's the problem you know I got all these projects Derek and I, I can't produce your band and run a career of a, a successful actor and and worry about getting my you know soul back somehow and he, he said he understood that was the thing, that was the kicker right there, you know, he understood. Because his mom, his mom lost her soul to a Chinese, get this, a Chinese, a Chinese dr demon took his mom's soul. And he's like, that's what I want the band to be about. I want it to be about that, about souls getting taken away. And, and the loss of, of that. And I'm like, man, finally somebody I connect with, you know. And so we had these, you know, dinner meetings under candlelight that turned out pretty good. And we got some product, you know, we got some good tracks turned out. Uh, Minuto98, I'm sure if you look them up on Amazon Tunes, you'll find all of their best hits. Produced by Cole Thomas and Cole Thomas Incorporated. And, uh, you know... We had some good times. I can't say that I was physically attracted to him, but he had the perfect mind. And I found out that later on, after I produced his band, you know, we were in, one day, we were in the studio, and he wanted to write this song, Girl, I'm Gonna Take Your Soul. And I, at about that time, I got a little suspicious, you know, I'm like, I thought the band was about saving people from getting their souls taken, not about taking souls. And, and Derek, he looks me in the eye and says, no. I want to go in a new direction. I want to 
to stop all of this stuff from happening. All the stuff that I've worked for in my career. It's just stupid. I want to end it all. And I'm like, whoa, man, this is this is serious, you know? This is this is scary. I've never seen you this way. And he says to me, I thought about it, and it's about taking souls. And I'm like, what? This is not, you know, this is not the direction that I was hoping that we were going to go in when I signed up for this project. And... You know, he starts singing this song in the recording booth because I can't stop him. He goes in there and he starts, he grabs the mic and he and, and the other guys of the band start singing. And he pulls off what I thought was his face, but it was just a mask. Son of a bitch turned out to be Mr. Yamaguchi, my thigh massaging, demon taking. It was him the whole time. And I find out, I ask him after he's done with this recording session, I'm like, how long? How long have you been planning? It's like, as long as you were alive. And I'm like, holy shit. And so all the albums that we released, all the albums that I produced that have my name on them, weren't intended to save the souls of these people who who had, you know, felt for us, who, who, who had lost their souls. They were intended to steal. And, and I, I look at the charts, I looked at the charts from VH1 at the time, which was called VH7, for logistical reasons, and and they had this graph on the soul-taking songs, and I thought the whole time it was the pop chart records, but it was soul songs that stole people's souls, and we were number one, and I I didn't know what to do. It was the end of my career, it was the end of my my life as far as I was concerned. But that was it. That was the end of it. I mean, I I walked out on the project. I lost millions of dollars. I tarnished my name. But, I mean, fucking, here I am today, living a life, if you can call it that. I don't know. I don't know anymore, you know? what What is your, what is your reality when that happens to you? It's nothing. So... Uh, these springs always pissed me off as a kid because they were I thought they were like shitty springs like the manual operating springs that your parents had back in my day we didn't have the automatic springs that you ran into and would send you going we had to push them and they would send us on our way uh, felt bad for my parents at the time because you know that was the worst part is that my parents had listened to this record put on by, by Mr. Yamaguchi in, in his soul-taking ways. And I was just, you know, shattered because my parents had lost their souls. And, uh... I went back home just, just the other day. A couple of weeks ago. And I said, Mom, Dad, are you, I mean, are you okay? I mean, it's been... Minuto 98 hasn't been on the charts for years, but I mean... You know, are you guys okay? I know you lost a lot, but they, they said to me, they said, Cole, we disown you. How could you work for these soul-taking demons? And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say back to that. God damn it. What are these things, anyway? Anyways. So yeah, I mean, where was I? That was, yeah, that's the story of how my parents disowned me. Yeah, so, there you go. Now you know. Here we go. Oil Ocean boss. This is the easiest boss in Sonic history. Ah, shit, Amy, no, you're jumping too high. Ah, oh, I thought you could duck under those. This thing is so fucking easy. All I have to do is jump down here. Oh, you hit the platform. No, anything but that. Oh, what the fuck? Fuck! Ugh. These Amy, like, I don't know what it is about Amy. Like, I don't know if 
she fucking plays with her titties before she goes into a boss battle. I mean, I would if I was a woman and I had to fight a boss. But, uh, she's probably the most, uh, inept of the Sonic gang. But I understand that, you know? I understand it's hard to be the only female in the Sonic gang. And you have to wear a skirt and, and have pink braids, you know, just so Sonic likes you. Oh, get the hit. Nope. Oh. Anybody as a kid who didn't know you could do this, like, honestly, you're dumb. Because this is the easiest way to avoid the laser. Even if it shoots the platform, because it does that sometimes. This is all you gotta do. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, one more hit. Uh, two more hits. Ooh. Man, he's gotta come up with a better laser. One that fires below platforms. There we go. He's done. He's down for the count. Although, that always confused me too. If this is really an oil ocean, which it looks like, and he's exploding in the oil ocean, wouldn't it cause, like, flash fires and sparks and more explosions and other issues? I just realized something. How am I going to take on the last boss is Amy. Like, I know... I know I'm a huge fan of the extra challenges, uh, especially when I'm drinking, that I, I, f I feel like video games are too easy. But I don't know how I'm going to take on the very last boss of this game as Amy. I don't think it's going to be easier. I think it's going to be more difficult. Oh, shit. Because you get no rings, and you have to get a bunch of hits on this big robot thing. And that's coming up. It's going to be coming up pretty quick here. Uh, these, those starfish are are pink tinted. That's adorable. Ah, God, these guys piss me off so much. Ah, spikes in the ground. Uh, no, spikes in the ground was the name of my first band, uh, and we had some we had some pretty good records. Uh, you can look us up on Amazon. We have at least all of our, our tracks are on there. Spikes in the ground. But, um, that was the problem, is that nobody knew how to find us online. Because we spelled the name of the band really weird. It was like Z, uh, P, Y, K, E, S, on the G, R, W, N, D, spikes on the ground. You won't be able to find us, I mean... I don't even know how we spelled it anymore, but good luck. Uh, ooh, all right, makes everything easier. A little bit of invincibility. Mm, oh man! Oh, there's a secret here, isn't there? Like you can jump through. Yeah, that's where the lamppost is. Like that's so stupid. Here we go. Oh, great. I got off that bolt just to transfer onto another one. Oh, great. Now I fucked it all up. I have to do that whole thing again, don't I? Yep. Here we go. Seriously, though, the more I... The more I uh, God damn. Excuse me. Um, the more I think about this, the harder it's going to be... To, to beat that last boss as uh, Amy because I know you have the hammer attack but I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sweet spot that boss like as Sonic because as a kid I beat this game many times um, sometimes with all the emeralds sometimes not this is obviously gonna be the case of where I didn't I was hoping to get more emeralds in this playthrough but I didn't I I wasn't gonna use save states or anything, but uh, that's just how it is. This spot always freaked me out as a kid too, because you could infinitely fall here. There's like no ground, like death point. You just kept falling through the same.